Hey guys, it's Brendan from Inspiration Nation. I'm here today with the founder of WCMX Wheelchair Motocross, Aaron Wills from Nitro Circus. Guys, welcome to Inspiration Nation. This is where we take stories of success, adversity, and determination to try and inspire others. So today I'm here with Aaron Falleringham. Yeah, that works. Uh, better known, AKA, as Wheels. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This is absolute, even from Australia, this is someone I've admired. I've been in America for six years. Someone I knew about before I even moved to the States. Someone's looked up to. Someone's inspired, motivated me. So uh, it's a pleasure. Absolutely stoked to have you here with me. So we're just gonna, we'll start with the story. So basically like your story is born with spine bifida. So spine bifida is like a, a non-developed spine, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's, it's, well, actually all I really know is it's a birth defect and it, it happens at birth and um, it's kind of a little bit different with everyone. So, you know, it affects people differently. Um, for me, like I, I have sensation in my legs, but I just have um, poor muscle in my legs. And, so you, you can you got feeling in your legs? You yeah. can slightly stand? Yeah, like I can stand if I'm holding on to stuff like crutches or whatever. And um, just for like short periods of time because it's a bit painful with the hips. And, and then when you like when you're born, you're adopted. Yeah. So why why were you put up for adoption? Your parents so, just So yeah, like my biological parents were a bit stressed out about yeah. the spina bifida and it makes sense cuz I had a lot of issues pretty yeah. early on and um um, so I was adopted by a pretty awesome family um, who my parents have gone on to adopt six kids all together. Oh, so wow. Were you the all first? All my siblings. Uh, I was the third. Oh, you were the third. And, uh, and I've, heard, I've heard him actually say this in other interviews. It's like buying, like taking on a broken car. Yeah. Like, so bringing you on wasn't, they knew it wasn't going to be easy, but they still stepped up. They still did it. It was just amazing for your parents to do that. Yeah, my, my parents are truly our champions. Um, they read books about spina bifida before getting me and that oh, wow. told them like the worst case so they knew they knew to expect <laughs> like well they thought they were expecting more uh, thankfully you know and they still took you on yeah and in that time you've how many surgeries have you been through now uh 23 23 surgeries all right so you're on crutches up to the age of seven and then you went full time into a wheelchair from there yeah so walking just kind of it was always slow and it wasn't very efficient you know and um it's pretty painful and as I got older it got even more painful so then so it's more I, the pain not, yeah. not so much the strength or the ability more yeah. the pain that you're suffering no because I mean I had the guns so yeah. like it was it was fine but it was just more like it was just like too painful and okay. so the wheelchair for me was just a big relief and it was you know it wasn't a lot of people have a hard time trans transitioning to the wheelchair from crutches because they feel like you know they're giving they're up going, but yeah going back you know but to me i was like no way the wheelchair is way better like it's fast you know and like you can zoom around and since, since the age of seven or eight you've just molded oh yeah you two have just become the one yeah i yeah. don't even miss crutches <laughs> that's amazing and then so the story is so what was the first skate park you ever went to uh, the first skate park I ever went to was called Metro. So Metro Skate Park in Las Vegas. And his older brother, how much older is your old, older brother? He's about four years older than me. He was a BMX rider. I took him to the skate park for the first time in the wheelchair. Yeah. And you could just explain that first experience to me. Well, like, I'd, I'd watched him ride his bike and his skateboards over the years. And so when we went to the park together, I, I loved watching him. And then he came up to me and he was like, hey, you want to drop in on your wheelchair? So your brother actually yeah. suggested it. He, suggested and it. what was your initial thought on that like, did you well, think it's crazy like, or did you kind of have that mindset well, like, why not? like kind of why not but like i also wanted to impress my older brother so okay um just kind of went for it it didn't work out at first so what happened know? Just didn't know how to do it really so i just went in on all four wheels without yep. doing a wheelie and just kind of face planted and, and the one thing i've um one thing i've noticed about a lot of wheels is stacks uh crashes is like I've skated, I've surfed. You've you've got different ways of falling, but when you're locked into a wheelchair, it's generally the back of his head or his face. Yeah, man. <laughs> he either falls forward or he falls backwards. Yeah. And there's no 
there's not much to you're, save yourself with. Yeah, you're just kind of because you're wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. So you're going down with so the you're ship. You're strapped in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's it's 100 percent commitment, and it's like fail or crash. And when you crash, you crash hard. Biggest thing. So you're in a wheelchair growing up. You know, did you get bullied? Did you get picked on? Did because you're skating uh, with a wheelchair? Did people just accept you? Like. Um, well, like in school, I, I definitely did experience some bullying, like uh, there were kids that would come up and like mess with me or push me over, or there were some times where kids would take my wheelchair, like, you know, because I was just cool, stranded. I, sometimes I'd let kids ride my wheelchair, yeah. you know, just so they could try it out, and sometimes they would just take off with it at school and not come and back. And leave you where? But as many times as that, yeah, wherever I was sitting on the <laughs> ground, they didn't care. It's but, nice. But as many people that bullied me, I had twice as many people that were just like on my side and cool. Okay. So like when kids were picking on me, there would be kids that would stand up for me. And I had this one big friend that like when they would steal my chair, he'd run up and push them out and grab okay. my chair. So they looked so. after you. All right, so at any point like growing up, you're in a, like, I know you don't like to be called in a wheelchair. What's, what do you like to, how do you like to say it? Well, like growing up, I was... Whenever people would ask me what it's like being in a wheelchair or being confined to a wheelchair, it always just kind of like, I was like, what, what? Like, like demeaning or You know, it kind of felt, yeah, restricted. like downgrading yeah. like or degrading because to me, I'm on a wheelchair, not in a wheelchair. Yeah, and it's the a wheelchair, tool that you utilize. Yeah, like you don't ever say a BMX rider's in a bike or yeah. in a skateboard, you Which know, is like. just amazing. That's amazing attitude so to have. It's just always. And you also don't like to be called uh, uh, disabled. Yeah, I mean, because it's restrictive hey, I'm too. only disabled when I need something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a so, parking spot. So, hence where he's parking right now, disabled car park, <laughs> prime parking right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I would take advantage of that every time I could too. <laughs> but not in a wheelchair, like on a wheelchair, not disabled because that's restricting, that's demeaning. You want to be treated like everybody else. That's right. So, was there any point growing up, anything you experienced where you just had enough? You're like, oh, life's unfair, everything's against me. Why is the world against me? Uh, I just want to give up. Or you always just had that positive attitude and always try to be the best you could be under your circumstances. I mean, just like anyone, you know, I've struggled with things like... What type uh, of struggle with you? Um, I mean, growing up, you know, it was definitely the bullying was hard and I'm um, just trying to figure out what I was doing and, you know, trying to... Because for me, the wheelchair hasn't ever been something I was ashamed of or something that bothered me. It was always something I loved. And so when people would treat me differently, even to this day, like when people look at me and treat me like I'm lesser of a human or something, yeah. you know, it, it it is hard for me and I have a hard time with it. Um, but I just got to remind myself that, you know, like it's just a stereotype. I'm doing the best that I can to show people that a wheelchair is not a bad thing and that it, it can be a tool. And so um, I just try to stay positive and focus on goals and, Okay, so 2009, um, your friend, uh, actually before that actually, your friends had mentioned that you should try out for Nitro Circus, mm -hmm. and I know you said that, no, I'm not going to try, they'll never take me, too many people are already flying. 2009, Nitro Circus actually contacts you, and invites you to come out to the mega ramp, and you're the first person to be recruited, the quickest person to be recruited in Nitro Circus ever, with one jump. <laughs> and that, explain that one jump to me. Um, that was that was a crazy one for sure. Like, um, actually, let's go let's go the mega ramp. So mega ramp is what a fifty foot yeah. high ramp. Sometimes I wish I didn't have wheels with me constantly, because it makes it a lot easier to get into situations like this. Yeah, exactly. With Bob on a mega ramp. Yeah. So the nitro ramp is about fifty feet tall, and it you know the gap varies. They can adjust it or whatever, but um. For the most part, jumping about 40 feet on the nitro ramp. 40 feet in a wheelchair, guys. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> sketchy, but... Um, and the first jump, rather than just jumping and trying to land, you decided to do what, a backflip, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> in front of, like, the guys you've looked up to. Well, like, I figured, you know, I'm going down this ramp, and I'm with Nitro Circus, and I just wanted to show them that, like, I can hang, you know? It's crazy. You're talking about the but, best motocross riders, BMX riders, scooters, skateboarders in the world. And you step up and do a backflip in a wheelchair in front of all these guys, one jump, and you get recruited, yeah? It was crazy, because I, first of all, I wasn't thinking I was going to make the gap. Like, I thought, if I <laughs> so don't... you thought you were going to make the gap, so you thought you'd do a backflip. Anyways, because at least I died doing a flip, yeah. you know, rather than a straight jump. So you jump. go all out. 
yeah that's <laughs> but it ends up working out perfectly for you worked out perfectly landed in the foam and then everyone's screaming and yeah telling me i'm in the crew and it's one thing you see skateboarders land cool stuff bmx riders but every time i've seen like wheels do something the support the encouragement is it's, it's on a whole new level everyone is ridiculous supportive towards what you do the 2010 um to now like 2017 been in Nitro Circus for like seven years now. Yeah. So how many how many shows have you done now? Over two hundred. Over two hundred shows. So it's two hundred two hundred times you've risked your life for other hairs. people's. <laughs> <laughs> you've risked your life for other people's entertainment. <laughs> um, you've had a blast doing it. You've travelled around the world. Oh uh, yeah, I've been able to travel to a lot of cool places yeah. and get a lot of concussions in different countries. It's pretty cool. But also <laughs> probably met amazing people, amazing places. Especially Aussies. Aussies are the best. Yeah, guys, hear that? Strands. We're just genuine. We, we love this stuff, hence that's why I've got him here. Right, so I was talking to uh, Wills earlier. So what I was saying is like, say when Tony Hawk came along with skateboarding, all he did was take skateboarding to the new level, doing new tricks, new heights, different things. Uh, so Wills is actually pioneering entire brand new sport. He's not following anybody. He's not running faster. He's not jumping further or higher. He's in a wheelchair at a skate park doing things that nobody thought was possible how does that feel to be like the godfather of a sport like you literally are the godfather of <laughs> it's a lot of pressure <laughs> when you put it like that but yeah. it's it's it is what it is it's in what like in 20 years time when there's kids uh riding wheelchairs at the skate park it's because of you that's got to feel good you know, that's, that's got to be an amazing feeling to it, it does feel good because you know for me the skate park has brought me so much joy and to be able to you know land tricks and stuff has just been unreal and to be able to share that with people and to help kids that think that might think that oh I'll never be able to ride a skate park you know or something it just kind of opens a new door and shows that you know not just like a wheelchair is fun and it's not just a medical device but like yeah like you can go out there and have fun too you know and I'm very much like uh, lead by example uh, yeah you can talk to talk what you want but you're actually doing it you're not saying, oh, I can do a backflip in a wheelchair. You're doing it. And then when he nails that, he does a double back in a flip in a wheelchair. And then he, ah, oh, I can do a front flip in a wheelchair. And I know there's talk about you doing a double front flip. Have you done that yet? Uh, to foam and to airbag. I'm working on That's amazing. A double front flip riding a wheelchair. <laughs> what's, what's beyond that? Like, how much further can you take it? Uh, man, I don't know. Because, like, whenever I feel like I'm at the top, like, then you have a new goal, you know, like yeah. when I'd done the backflip after a little while, I was like, well, you know, there's only one thing left to do. And so um, I think after, you know, double front flip, I'd like to do some more off axis flips. And kind stuff. of like motocross, yeah. like BMX spinning. Is that, I know after you watched Travis do the double backflip on the um, on motocross, I know that's what inspired you to do the double backflip on the wheelchair. Yeah. So what, have you seen any BMX riders, anyone do anything specifically that you want to kind of replicate? Oh man, like right there's now, a like... lot, like um, Brandon Lupos, a yep. BMX rider, uh, his cash roll is sick, and so I really want to learn Explain that to me. What it's is like that exactly? It's like a front three, kind of like... So, um, like a front flip with a 360 in it? Yeah. So kind of like a just big twisty Yeah, like ARS they call it a cash roll, but I want to, I really want to land one. And... Alright, so besides Nitro Circus, um, you're doing a little bit of emotional, uh, motivational speaking? You're also taking kids out on skate park, like wheelchairs, adults, uh, what, kind of like like mentoring, aren't you, in a way? Uh, yeah, like just... a coach mentoring type of thing. Uh, when you travel the world, you're going to like uh, like hospitals, would it? or schools, or where are you actually going to meet these people? So I've I've been able to visit uh, hospitals and schools and you know some businesses and just trying to get out there and um, kind of share the message and share the. You know, a wheelchair truly is more than a medical device yep. and that it it can be a tool, it can help you achieve something rather than just be a dead end, you know. And, and what, what type of feedback, what type of response are you getting by doing that? Man, it people must be overwhelming. Are, people are just pumped, you know. They're, is it like really emotionally overwhelming? Does it kind of You know, sometimes it sometimes. hits me. And yeah, I'm I, like, I could feel it just hitting in the heart sometimes. Like, you know, because it's easy to just kind of get caught up like I'm just having fun in the park, it's just what I love to do, but then um, it's it's deeper than just that you know and so sometimes I don't really realize it and then when I do I'm like wow you know this is a, this is a great thing um, to be able to help people see it is you know 
that their life isn't over just because they're sitting on a chair, you know? It's amazing. What's what's one thing that's that stood out to you? Have you um, got one thing that really sticks out in your mind? Well, uh, so there was this, there's this girl that I met at a Nitro show about a year or two ago, and she's on a wheelchair, and like, it was our first time meeting, uh, just kind of went up into the stands to say hi to her, and, um... So you just picked her out of the crowd, because she's on a wheelchair? Uh, I, th I forget how it happened, but we ended up, I ended up getting up there to her, and, um, and she said she wanted to get into skate parks, wanted to start riding WCMX, and so, um, we had... Um, we got in touch on Facebook, and I ended up, uh, I had an old wheelchair that I wasn't using anymore, and I sent it to her. Oh, wow, she and, actually gave you a wheelchair. So, yeah, one awesome. of my old chairs, the green awesome. one, and she, um, she took off. She just, like, started going to skate parks all the time, and yesterday she just landed a back. Oh, wow, really? And she's just having she's so the second much person? fun. Second woman to do it. Wow. Yeah, so, well, she's wow. a young girl. How old is she? Oh, I don't even know. I I don't. She's young though. That, that's that's got to feel incredible. That's got to be. Lily Rice. She's, and I was just. Where's she from? She's from the UK. Oh wow, that's so you're influencing someone like in the other end of the world. All right, so you've accomplished things you never thought was possible, and because of the wheelchair, uh, not just circus, motivational speaking, <gasps> getting girls in a different country to do backflips. Yeah. Uh, Short-term goals. What's your goals right now? I'd say the top of my list is that double front flip. Just something I up just... Up in your tricks? Yeah, just up in the tricks and, you know, just always progression, progression, yep. you know. And what about long-term? So, obviously, like, your body's got to give in on you eventually. Like, <laughs> all these crashes and I don't know, how old is Tony Hawk? He's yeah, still Tony Hawk's still going hard. <laughs> He's an old man. What about uh, long-term? Do you want to be more uh, motivational speaking? Like, what's long-term goals? You yeah. Think? You I, want to write a book? Like, <laughs> that's a lot it's, of work. It's totally, yeah. on the, it's totally doable, though. Yeah, like, I am. Um, what are you kind of thinking? i definitely like to do more speaking, maybe even a speaking tour and just kind of share some of my experiences and kind of um, spread what I've learned um, yep. around. And, um, How about a TEDx talk? A TED talk would be tight. Think, if you listen, yeah. you're a part of TED, I think perfect. Perfect person for TEDx talk. All right, to finish the interview off, we've got quick questions. Number one, who do you look up to and why? Who's your mentor? First of all, yeah, definitely my parents. Um, my parents have made all of this possible and um, also my wheelchair mechanic, Mike Box, who built my chairs and everything. What, he's up to what, like 17 version or something? Dude, now, isn't we've, it? This is probably in the 30s of... 30 version, because he keeps crushing the things. He's destroying them, and every, <laughs> time, destroying them. every time I destroy one, he makes me a new one, and says, go break this one. Which and is a little bit faster, a little bit stronger. Yeah, just each one just gets better and better, and yep. so, you know, I really have to thank Mike Box for letting me, you know, chase my dreams. Favorite book, you read? Uh, I've, I've been getting into reading a bit yeah, more. that's good. Hear that, guys? If you don't read... Even he reads. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit out slow, um, but I just got a new book called um, Unlimited Power by Tony Robbins. Yeah, amazing book. Uh, just, uh, you know, looking for some good inspiration. Yeah, know? awesome. Uh, favorite quote? The one that always kind of stands out to me is, um, I don't know who said it, but it was, don't die wondering. Okay. And So, like, don't live life with regrets. Well, don't, like, yeah, exactly, because, you know... It, when for me when it says don't die wondering I think well you know sometimes there's times where I'm scared to try a trick and I go for it anyways and then I end up landing it and so if I had never gone for it and you know you, you don't know yeah, what you would have accomplished absolutely so I always try everything yeah. because worst case scenario you fail and you but just, failing's only failing when you give up anyways isn't it? Exactly. I just want to quickly go to that the closest you ever came to giving up I heard double backflip yeah. Just quickly give me a little rundown of that. Well, that. How often did you try? Yeah, I'd been trying this double backflip for a year and just crash after crash. And like, like these crashes were like, I was landing it and then crashing. So it was getting really frustrating. And then um, I got to my low point and was just about to throw in the towel. Like I broke my chair, I'd hurt my shoulder and I was over it. And then um, I just got up, fixed my chair, kind of sucked it up, you know, and I ended up landing it three tries later. Okay. And so for the, me, that was like, holy crap. Like, you know, it's always the hardest right before you succeed. And that just took you to your whole new mental mental state. So that just... You can do what on, you didn't think was possible. For me, the double backflip was just like what I needed to 
show myself that anything's really possible. You know? Alright, I just want to say a huge thank you to Aaron Wheels from Nitro Circus for coming out, being my first episode of Inspiration Nation. Look out for more episodes. See you next time, guys.